Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. I have right behind me my Toyota 4Runner Limited. And as you know, this one is built in Japan at the Tahara factory where I have been to many times. It's one of the best built vehicles in the world. So I'm going to show you my usual engineer's audit and show you how good the quality is on this Toyota 4Runner Limited. Let's go. Welcome back. So you may or may not be aware that I have owned many different Toyota 4Runners over the years including a TRD Pro and right now the limited version which I like it a lot because it's got the all-wheel drive and also some of the upscale features. But they're all built in Tahara factory which I still consider to be perhaps the best factory in the world and definitely among the best within the Toyota family. So let's take a look to see how this thing stand up to my usual quality audit check by looking at the panel alignment, the panel gaps, and also looking at the paint quality and the paint thickness. So I've got my usual gauge here to check for the quality of the gap. You can probably already tell that it is amazing quality in terms of the alignment and the paint job, but let's actually figure it out. So if I look at the gap right here between the front hood and the front fender, you can tell it's actually only three millimeters here. And uh, would you believe it, it's exactly the same as three millimeter in the back. So this thing is so consistent and straight as an arrow it's hard to believe because you actually cannot achieve this level of quality in any modern vehicles these days. And you can tell also the alignment is perfect. This side and this side is exactly the same height. And you can really see how perfect the alignment is when you try to come closer to the edge like this. And it just looks absolutely amazing. What about between the front fender and the front door? It's also a really good three millimeter here, three millimeter down here. And actually same thing here, maybe a bit wider, 3.8 millimeter here. And in between the rear door and the rear fender, back to three millimeter. It's always wider here between the, the rear hatch and the rear fender. So that's about four and a half millimeters, but that's pretty normal for this type of vehicle. It's just really by design, but the rest of the body is just absolutely amazingly well built. If you look at the alignment, you can tell that it is perfectly um, shaped through the stamping shop and through the body shop in manufacturing where I used to spend many years working and building cars. And we always say there's nothing quite like the cars been built in Tahara factory. And sure enough, you can kind of glance over this and slowly walk through and the whole side looks like it's built from a single sheet of metal. That is what is so amazing about the 4Runner along with other models built in Tahara factory which includes a Lexus GX, which I do own as well. Now, what about the paint job? This is a magnetic gray, and it's not a special paint by any means. You can tell from just a simple car wash that I did that it is pretty good gloss. This car is now a couple of years old, but the clear coat, it still looks really good. Almost no orange peel, just a little bit here, uh, but not much, and the gloss is perfect, very consistent, and the paint is uniform all the way through from the front all the way to the back. It is one of the best uh, paint job you can have. It's not super deep looking like the way you find in some Lexus, but that is simply because of the amount of clear coat they apply. The more clear coat you apply or more layer you apply, it, the paint is going to look deeper. And obviously they don't do that with a 4Runner compared to let's say a Lexus GX or LX. Now let's measure the paint thickness to see how this uh, comes out. So I got my usual paint thickness gauge, which measures the total amount of paint including the undercoat and the clear coat above the um, steel panels. This is all steel, by the way, for 4Runner because it's old-fashioned design, but that also makes the, um, the metals actually have a different characteristic and it, it resists the door dings more as well. So let's measure the paint thickness, which I expect to be between 100 to 180 microns. Most Toyota products are about 100 to 120, so that should be in that neighborhood. The front hood is 102. The fender is 106 and the door 108 and the rear door is 122 and the rear fender is 98 so this is a little bit thinner than what i like i'm wondering whether when i took it to a detailing shop and they had to polish out some of the swirl marks in here whether they took too much of the clear coat out that's very possible the paint job still looks good though. So the paint thickness is pretty average, you know, just about 100 in most cases. And uh, that's pretty well what you get from Toyota. Obviously thicker the better for durability reasons, but more important than the paint thickness 
is the consistency and uniformity. So you notice that the paint thickness is pretty well the same from front hood to the fenders all the way to the back. And that's what you want. If you happen to notice when you're using this that one of the panels are either too thick or too thin, then you know that they've done some kind of repair work on it. So sometimes I'm using this to check for used car and one of the panels is twice as thick as all the other paints, then you know that they've done some paint work on it. So that's one of the ways to figure out whether there was any damage on the car. But the paint job overall, like I said, looks fantastic. Uh, I'm not too crazy about magnetic gray, although it looks great in the Forerunner. And I do like the whiter or lighter colors, especially Lunar Rock, which is actually not available on the Limited, but available on the TRD Sport version. And that color looks amazing. Um, but either way, I'm happy with the paint job on the Forerunner. It looks really good. And overall, I think it's going to be one of those cars that will last forever because the reliability is shockingly good on the Forerunner. It has won many awards over the years for being trouble free and it will continue to do so until such time Toyota decided to replace it perhaps late next year with a new model. And who knows what's gonna happen with that one because when a brand new model comes out, there's always a chance that reliability and durability could go down, especially if they move from a V6 engine that we have here to potentially turbocharged four cylinder engine, which is what's rumored to be in a new Forerunner. Well, now that I've finished the actual quality check, I'm going to also show you a few things that you might not be aware on the Forerunner, which is the way these metals are built and manufactured and welded together. Because it's an older design, the metals are actually a little bit thicker than in modern cars. And I'll show you when I open the hood and uh, when I open the door here, uh, you'll know what I mean. So let me open the door here. And what you will see here is the, the actual parts coming together, which is the rear panel for the door and the exterior panel, they are welded together. And then they have this glue that comes on from top to bottom to seal it. And you can just tell by looking at the thickness of the metal here and by just tapping on it, how thick these steel panels are compared to other modern vehicles. You can see a little bit of a weld mark here. Uh, and I can tell by the weld mark how thick the metal is because I used to be a welding engineer for a number of car companies. So I can actually tell the thickness of the metal by just looking at the edge here and you can tell right away it's super beefy metal here and just by um, closing the door you can tell that sound it's possible not just because of the type of gasket they use but because the doors are actually heavy and uh, steels are actually quite thick in comparison to some of the modern cars today. Same thing in the hood here you can see the thickness over here right on the edge. If you follow through here, same thing. You can kind of see the thickness of the metal here. I can actually use my finger and touch it and tell you that this is once again, at least five to 8% thicker than most modern SUVs. So if you compare this to say uh, upcoming Grand Highlander, then this will be a, a lot thicker. Although you have to also keep in mind the Grand Highlander will have a lot more aluminum parts, which has a whole different uh, characteristic from steel panels. And I like the fact that this is still built with solid steel because aluminum components and parts are obviously lighter and more efficient overall but they're much more finicky to repair and to fix and get it uh, to look right and they're also very difficult to weld so if you have to replace any of the panels due to an accident and weld them together again uh, well that's a lot harder for a body shop to figure out and to get it done right as well the aluminum panels are, are obviously more sensitive to door dings and so forth when someone flings door and hits your car just because the aluminum characteristic is such that they're not as resistant to something hitting these metals compared to st steel you can really tell that these things are thick uh, so those are some interesting things i want to point out let me open the hood quickly and show you the panel there as well So hopefully I can show you this, which is a little bit hard on the camera, but you can see the thickness of the metal here is quite substantial. Uh, once again, if you just wrap your finger around it, you can kind of tell the thickness of it. And also it's really solidly welded all the way through here and with a sealant covering the weld in here. Um, and you can tell that uh, the metal is very solid compared to Many newer models, if you do that, it sounds very tinny in other models. Even though it's a very simple engine compartment and this engine itself is, is also very simple, uh, well, this four liter V6 engine is super solid and very reliable and uh, very few things goes wrong with it. So that's another reason to buy 
the current Forerunner, because it's just been around for so long, with very little issue and problem. If you talk to anyone that knows anything about um, mechanics such as car care nut, they'll tell you that the Forerunner is the one to buy for reliability reasons. By the way, if you look carefully, the um, production specialists have marked their signature uh, paint. They dab a little paint to let quality people know that it was done correctly and they checked for everything. And you'll see that kind of paint mark everywhere. There's a blue paint mark over there, which is hard to see. A pink one over there. Each color denotes something different. And you can really tell that the way they built uh, the engine even is just a little bit different from the modern technology. When people say they don't make them like they used to, well, that is definitely true in the case of a Forerunner. The whole thing is absolutely solid, easy to service, and likely to last many, many years, maybe even into millions of miles. So those are some of the things that are really quite impressive about the Forerunner. I will be doing some comparison of the Forerunner to my Lexus GX as well, because they're both built in the Tahara factory, and you might want to see the difference between the two. But for now, I'm signing off. I hope you like my quick audit of the Forerunner. If you enjoyed my video, would you kindly hit the thumbs up and make some comments? And if you haven't done so, perhaps you can subscribe as well. And that would be truly appreciated. Until the next video, I'm signing off for now. Thank you so much.